We're going to share with you the five VCLM, that's Vendor and Contract Lifecycle Management Trends of 2024 that you should probably be aware of. Trend number one is a move to more agile ways of working within procurement. And this isn't just talking about sourcing, although I think the sourcing element is an absolute must have. Changing the approach there from a traditional RFP based approach to a more collaborative workshop based approach is definitely going to be beneficial. Lauren Tennant actually came onto the Procurement Reimagine podcast and talked a lot of sense about why procurement needs to move away from traditional ways of work into a more agile way of working. Our data tells us, the industry data tells us that um, at least 50% of people that go through procurement processes are dissatisfied with the results. And most wow. organizations, yeah, uh, that's a stat. Um, and when you consider how many billions globally are in the outsourcing spend, 50% uh, of that is effectively uh, classed as disappointing or worse. <clears throat> and so um, there's a real need, not just because it takes a while and the results are a bit poor, but there's a real need to change the way that we buy technology because technology is not like buying toilet rolls, paper clips rings of paper, fire testing services, whatever else um, organizations have to buy is complex. And in that complexity lies a lot of risk. And what we've seen from various customers here at Gatekeeper is that there is an absolute need and want to start doing things in a more agile method. So what does that mean? So typically everything runs sequentially in procurement. You do your, your RFX, you do your onboarding, you do your due diligence, contracts, signatures, you start working with your, your vendors. But what if we can overlap more of this? So perhaps we look at three different vendors and we onboard them, do the due diligence, and we start contract negotiations with all three at the same time. How does that work? Well, for some people, they're going to absolutely hate this. They're, they will not be able to uh, figure this out or work in that way. But what this does, it gives you a slight competitive advantage in that you are leveraging the contract, the due diligence, the onboarding process against all of those other vendors in that process. So a typical issue that arises is that you award a RFP to a single vendor and then you start contracting with them. You start the negotiations, you start reviewing, you start chatting to them about it, but you've lost leverage already at this point. So it's about thinking about how can we do things in parallel? How can we leverage more in that that pre-contract signature phase to get better results with our vendors and for our organization. So risk management is trend number two, and I'm, I'm gonna leave it quite broad there. And what we're seeing is risk management really incorporating itself into that vendor and contract lifecycle. That's why we at Gatekeeper believe in this VCLM model, which is vendor lifecycle management, contract lifecycle management, and third party risk management. Tom Rogers actually came onto the procurement reimagined and had this to say about risk management. So that that vendor management function that's kind of the glue. Remember, I was talking about the framework, the kind of the glue that holds all that together. They can sit in different places, and we find that that's fine. That's okay because um, it has to work within the culture and the size and the scope and the resources of the particular client and industry they're in, things like that. But, but having that vendor management function is really critical because they're really the glue that is able to coordinate all those different pieces together because compliance is still doing compliance, procurement, if there's a procurement function is still doing procurement, you know, the business owners are still managing contracts, InfoSec is still looking at cybersecurity with third parties. So that doesn't all come together. Those folks are all kind of still doing their things but the framework and the VMO are really the quarterback. You know, the framework creates the structure and the vendor management office or the vendor management function. They're the ones that are helping to, to really make sure everybody's working together. Now, I like what Tom said last year in 2023 about this. There are silos in many organizations. You've got procurement, legal, finance, risk, compliance, a bunch of other teams, right? And in between all of these silos, that's where these risks typically fester and emerge from. And that's where they cause you the most pain. So just breaking down silos to start with, within risk management is great. And then maturing your capability in risk management. So perhaps your due diligence gets a bit of an injection of 
better questions. Perhaps you do credit checks. Cyber checks, I think, is a huge one. I was just reading this week about the British Library suffering a huge, huge hack where uh, they were held to ransom and they didn't pay the fee to the hackers. It's kind of <laughs> kudos to them. But now it's going to cost them 10 times that fee that they could have paid to completely dismantle their uh, tech stack, let's say, their capability and most of their services will be offline in 2024. It's really scary out there and that's always in the back of my mind when it comes to cyber risk. Trend number three is the integration of ESG into pretty much everything that we do with our vendors and it's been growing in prevalence over the last couple of years but what we're seeing more and more is teams coming to us and saying that they need help. They need help engaging their vendors to ask questions around the environment, social and governance factors and how can they do this? How can they do it effectively within Gatekeeper? And we're going to see more and more of this. Hannah McDonald from Monza actually came onto the podcast and shared some really cool insights about her approach and her views on ESG. She kind of sees that as the future of procurement. And what we've done here at Gatekeeper is create a best practice workflow that enables all of our customers just to add the workflow into their Gatekeeper tenant and use it to interact with their vendors, to get loads of data from their vendors about various ESG points so that finally they can start understanding what their, their vendor base looks like, what their vendors' vendors look like, and so on. So it's building up that data picture and getting some really good data for them. Now, trends number four and five are more contract related. So trend number four is all about challenging traditional contract language. I had Ken Adams on the podcast. He's an absolute genius. I actually used his uh, his manual for contract authoring book in my last role and it was incredible right and I used it to simplify the way in which I was redlining my vendor terms because I just wanted to make it far more simple than <laughs> typically the, the SaaS agreements that I was being provided with uh, are, are just full of convoluted nonsense and we need to, to strip that back so simpler language simpler approach removing stuff out of contracts, not just relying on copy and paste precedents, 